Hello, my name is Shahab Dean Mohakek. Uh, I'm the director of West Virginia University Laboratory for Engineering Application of Data Science, also known as WVU Leeds. Uh, this is a presentation for AICHE annual meeting of 2020. The topic is uh, smart proxy modeling for computational fluid dynamics. This is the application of artificial intelligence and machine learning in numerical simulation. I will talk about uh, the B6 uh, combustor that was used for this purpose, the CFD model that was developed using uh, ANSYS Fluent for this particular problem, uh, the simulation runs that was done, and then the smart proxy development and its blind validation. The B6 combustor that was used uh, uh, for this purpose, uh, the ANSYS Fluent model was used to generate a computational fluid dynamic simulation uh, for this experiment. Uh, B6 combustor is a roughly 7 inch diameter combustion chamber and the uh, length of the combustion zone is about uh, 36 inches with detail uh, dimensions on notes. Uh, what you see here on the bottom is the B6 experimental detail uh, that was done and uh, then the CFD model was developed for this experimental uh, detail. As you can see, the, the uh, CFD model that was developed using ANSYS Fluent uh, models every single piece of this uh, combustor uh, one by one. And uh, here it shows you all the different pieces that are involved in this process. One thing that I need to mention is that the traditional proxy modeling that has been used for numerical simulation uh, is quite different from uh, the smart proxy modeling that is used or application of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, there are, as you are I'm sure are familiar with this fact that there are two traditional uh, proxy modeling uh, for numerical simulation. Uh, it is used in all different industries. One is called reduced order model and uh, the definition of a reduced order model is to simplify the physics of numerical simulation and or to reduce the resolution in space and time. Uh, the response surface method is the other traditional uh, proxy modeling, uh, which is a traditional statistical approach, curve fitting approach, and it tries to find the correlation between some of the inputs and some of the output variables uh, in uh, a given uh, numerical simulation. Uh, and it does it only at a certain time or certain location and it uses hundreds of uh, simulation runs. Smart proxy modeling is very different. Number one, it does not reduce the physics or the resolution. And number two, it doesn't concentrate on a certain location and certain time and it does not, and uh, therefore it goes for the entire system uh, and it doesn't use hundreds of simulation runs. As you can see for this process, we only used eight simulation runs. The details of uh, this particular CFD model includes that uh, a single uh, run of uh, this uh, CFD model, or the CFD model was developed using 9.3 million cells, and uh, a single run of this uh, CFD model, the Fluent uh, model on DOE's high performance computing, which had 40 uh, CPUs, it takes 24 hours to make a single run. Uh, in order to perform this smart proxy modeling, uh, we require the eight, only eight CFD runs. Four of them, uh, it was called base case and four of them was blended case. I will explain them in a second. And uh, 
the, this from this eight model, uh, the records that we used were actually more than 74 million, as you can see here, because eight runs times 99.3 million uh, cells per run uh, provides that. To develop it, we use 70% of that data for training, 15% for calibration, and 15% for validation. That is the development. And then what we do, we do what we call blind validation, which is the next step that I will explain. This shows the difference of this approach of AI and machine learning when you compare it with the application of AI and machine learning with non-engineering uh, problems that you see in Google, in Facebook, in Netflix, and uh, so forth. Uh, a bit of details of these eight runs that we used. Uh, these are the inputs, the methane, uh, propane, and so forth. And uh, as you can see, uh, these four are uh, uh, referenced or ref uh, referred to as the base uh, volume. And these uh, four are referred to as uh, blended volume. And as you can see in base volume, only those, uh, those two are changed, whereby in blended, um, three of them are changed for each run. Uh, what happens in Smart Proxy, you take the data from the CFD run, so you use supervised learning, and then you build a CFD Smart Proxy. This is a very simplified version of staying the workflow. To give you a bit more detail of this workflow, which uh, a lot of detail of this has been uh, published uh, in a, uh, a DOE uh, project uh, report that you can uh, look uh, and find it uh, online. Uh, again, this is a summary, not exactly what we have done, but I can actually show you given the fact that there's a short presentation. So what we do, we start with the QC and QA, QA of the data from the CFD that we get. A lot of visualization takes place and we make sure we generate a very good understanding of the physics behind this process. Then a new feature generation is done, whereby you bring in uh, the boundaries, you bring in all the neighbors, uh, cells for every single well focal uh, cell that we talk about and then as you saw probably there are swirls that bring in uh, the uh, methane and air and that's what happens and all the cells are impacted by those swirlers so the few new feature generations includes uh, calculation of distance from that all of these brings a new set of data and that new set of data is patched in order to identify how it should be trained. This process is called descriptive analytics. After that, that all that information goes, we use some sort of unsupervised learning in order to help the supervised learning. And then the CFD smart proxy is developed. This process we call predictive analytics. Once we develop the model and validate it, as I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, then that uh, CFD model can be used as a prescriptive analytics to make decisions because once that is done, then you can use the smart proxy, the CFD run that I told you uh, took 24 hours on uh, DOE's HPC. It can literally run on your laptop or on right now, it can be run on your laptop and on your uh, workstation, uh, on your uh, desktop. Uh, for a uh, literally few uh, minutes uh, to get the same result as you will see in a second. Uh, and therefore, it is possible for you to make hundreds and thousands of uh, simulation runs using smart proxy, very high accuracy, and uh, based on that, make any decision or any optimization that you want to make or do uncertainty quantification. Uh, this is the data that we used or we received from the CFD, and these are the data that uh, we generated, as I mentioned. Uh, we received about 51 uh, categories of the 51 parameters, and we generated 35 uh, together. That's 86, but uh, we did something called uh, key performance indicators. We use fuzzy logic to do that. That's a different story. We can talk about it at a different time, Never, nevertheless. We were able to identify 56 of these inputs in order to build our uh, model output. And we used a single output for a given uh, CFD. This provides you with a uh, 
uh, min max and the range of pressure, temperature, nitrogen, oxygen, and CO2 that is going to be uh, shown you in a minute. Uh, so the the combustor has an inlet. Uh, this process an uh, inlet combustor and exhaust. And what I will be showing you uh, is the uh, the figure. This is a full figure of it. This is a three quarter uh, cross section. Excuse me, so you can see what happens inside. This is a half a cross section, and this is a quarter cross section. The smart proxy model development, as I mentioned. We use training, calibration, and validation, and therefore the data that we deal with is divided to four sections. One is the training, one is calibration, one is validation, that's part of the data. Another, the fourth part, is the blind validation that I'm going to show you after this. So this is the training, calibration, and validation of the smart proxy model. And what you'll be looking at uh, is each uh, output. For example, here is the pressure. On the left, you see the, uh, the results from the CFD that came from ANSYS Fluent, and on the right you can see the result of the CFD uh, Smart Proxy. And this is the full, uh, this is the three-quarter, this is one-half, this is one-quarter for pressure. You see the, how uh, close to each other they are. Uh, the next one is the temperature uh, for the full three-quarter, half, and one-quarter. Uh, this one is the nitrogen. Uh, this one is oxygen. And this one is uh, carbon dioxide. And here you can see how accurate the model, smart proxy model is. But we're not done with this because the smart proxy model that is very accurate is good, but it just shows you what it's capable of doing. Now what we do after we finish the smart proxy model, then we uh, asked uh, for two new runs that was not used at all to train, calibrate, or validate the model. That's what we call blind validation. Uh, they, the input was given to us. The input was used and CFD generated out, uh, the smart proxy generated output, and that output was compared with the CFD uh, output that was generated by, by, by uh, Fluent. And uh, you can see the results here. There was two of them, one uh, base, one blended. This is the base, the, we called it number nine. This is the pressure. Uh, on the left, you see the NETL model, which is the, done by, by Fluent. The one in the middle is uh, WVU Leeds Smart Proxy model. And when you subtract those two, this is you get the percentages up to maximum from 0 to 5% maximum of the error on the right-hand side. This is the full and this is the half. And here it shows you the distribution of the error. And as you can see, about 100%, all the 100% is less than 10% error. And within the 10% error, you can see actually all of them is less than 2% error. We go to temperature, you can see the full, and you can see the half, and you can see the distribution. So about 97% uh, is less than 10% error. 97% of the cell, 9.8 million cells for a single run. And uh, then you can see 3% uh, is less than 10% and gives you all the details. We go to carbon dioxide, and this is the distribution of the error. And you can see 99.2% is less than 2%. Two, two this is nitrogen, this is the error, and this is oxygen. This is there. Uh, this ends the uh, presentation. Uh, the issue that comes up is now that you're able to perform this type of analysis using smart proxy, what else uh, AI and machine learning can do uh, for uh, this type of technology. Uh, thank you very much and have a great day.